Hey guys, Dolo304 here. I'm here to give you my final iPhone 6S review. So I, obviously I got this phone a couple of weeks ago and I have obviously it's my main phone and I'm ready to tell you all about it. So let's go ahead and get into this. So the iPhone 6S came out September 25th. I got it on launch day, so I've had it since then. So I've had it over two weeks now. And it is I'm just going to preface this review by saying this phone is pretty freaking awesome. So here we go. Let's go ahead and dive in. Now, I don't want to talk about the phone. Actually, the first thing I don't want to the first thing I want to talk about is actually the box for this year. This is the box for this year, and if I compare it to an iPhone 6 box, you can see the difference here. So, the iPhone 6 box, I don't know what the hell they were thinking when they designed this box. It's boring, it sucks. This iPhone 6 box sucks in every way. But here we have the iPhone 6S box. They brought back the <laughs> actual model designation which is nice they brought back the front graphic we have a new uh, fish on the front this year and they they just gen in general they brought back the original box design which I'm happy about so that's cool the box is a lot nicer looking this year which I'm really really happy about so that's that so the I the iPhone 6s here it is here is the actual phone so the first thing I actually want to touch on well I want to do a short hardware tour um, that's not going to take very long. The iPhone 6S is, is externally pretty much exactly the same as the 6. All the buttons are in the in the same place. You've got your lock button over here, volume buttons over here, and then we have the mute switch there. Um, you know, earpiece, camera, microphone, or uh, yeah, earpiece, camera, proximity sensor all in the same place. Home button there. Headphone jack, lightning cable, speaker, all in the same place. Everything is basically the same on the outside. Um, the placement anyway. New though, <laughs> this is pretty much the only way you're going to be able to tell besides the new rose gold color that you have a 6S. There is now an, a little S on the bottom. I don't know, I think it's kind of cool, it looks nice. And if you also notice there is no no more FCC labels on the phone on the outside and there's also no no more serial number out here. That is all in the software. So if you go into the settings and you go to the regulatory thing, it'll give you all that information. But it is not on the outside of the phone anymore. I don't know, I think it looks a little nicer. Kinda nice there. So let's talk about the hardware improvements and this this is one of the biggest reasons I actually bought this phone. A lot of you will remember that I had a lot of structural problems with the iPhone 6 um, mainly bending and the glass popping. Well. Apple has made improvements on this front in pretty much every area. They're now using 7000 series aluminum, which is aerospace grade, which is really cool. They used to be using 6000 series, which wasn't really strong enough. The, the iPhone 6 bend gate was really a big thing. And so I'm glad they use 7000 series this, this year. And I've already seen the bend tests and stuff by like unbox therapy and that kind of thing this aluminum is over twice as strong as the previous one so I don't think we're gonna have a bend gate this year which I'm really happy about the cover glass is also um, have been improved apparently it is also a lot stronger than it used to be it's still the ion exchange process glass but it's supposed to be pretty damn strong now which is great and also what they did which Apple didn't really tell anybody about this but they also ran a, an, a small adhesive strip around the perimeter of the display. Now what that does is first of all it gets rid of the clicking and popping that people were experiencing with the iPhone with the iPhone 6 but what it also does is it increases the water resistance of the phone. I don't know if you guys have seen these videos by like various YouTubers but people have stuck this phone under water for 20 minutes and pulled it back out and it was mostly fine. So this phone, I'm, <laughs> I'm not saying go dump it in water, definitely don't do that, but the phone is going to be more resilient against water which is great so that's that I'm glad they made all of these improvements on the outside of the phone and as far as like general build quality goes because I had a lot of issues with the 6 last year this thing is flawless like everything is in the right place nothing is misaligned everything is good with this phone so I'm very happy about that so let's talk about hardware specs and performance for a minute we're rocking an Apple A9 this year which is like t over twice as fast as last year. So the A9 SoC it's running at 1.8 gigahertz now instead of 1.4, which is cool. And we also have two gigabytes of RAM. Finally, we have had one gigabyte of RAM since the iPhone 5. 
So I'm really glad that Apple bumped up the RAM on this phone to two gigabytes. What does that mean? Well, it means if you go in here, you can cache a million different applications and they'll stay in there forever. One of the biggest things I hate about all Android phones is that they can't seem to cache nearly as many apps as the iPhone can. And I don't know, that just really bothers me for some reason. So I'm glad that, you know, Apple not only bumped the RAM up, they are, they, their app caching was already good with one gig, but now it's even better, which is awesome. So that's cool. Also, we have a new M9 motion coprocessor. I'm not sure really what the improvement there is. I know that it's, um, I know that it is now always on. So even if your phone is sleeping, the M9 coprocessor is always awake. And what that allows you to do is, well, let me just demonstrate. Hey Siri. Okay, I guess it's not going to work. Oh wait, maybe I turned it off. Okay, well anyway, you can do Hey Siri now while your phone is locked. It used to be that you could only do it when the phone was plugged into power, but now you can do it anytime you want. I turned it off because it kept triggering itself. If I if I say a word like serious, it would trigger. So, I don't know. I turned it off. Um, they needed some work on that, but that's that. That's cool. So, the M9 is always in the background now. <clears throat> as far as actual benchmarks go, this phone is like well, for one, it's about as powerful as an iPad Air 2 with one less core. So that just gives you an idea. And according to Apple, this phone is more powerful than most than than 80% of the laptops out there right now. Which I believe that because most people <laughs> most people buy these crappy Core i3 laptops or below that. So I believe that this phone is a freaking powerhouse in terms of in terms of horsepower. So really happy with that. There are more LTE bands now. The the iPhone now supports LTE band 12, so people who have T-Mobile, y'all can rejoice. You will have band 12, which is great. So, to demonstrate the performance, I'm going to actually load up a game which is uh, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas here. I'm just going to play a little bit for you guys. Let me turn the volume down. But th basically what we have here is we have console level graphics on a phone. So instead of having to get out the Xbox, you can play a full, you know, computer game, Grand Theft Auto, on your phone. And you can see that the frame rate is really smooth. This Games on this phone run like a dream. It's pretty freaking amazing. So... Yeah, there's GTA for you. I'm not going to, like, play for a million years because we need to get on with the review. But that is cool. The performance on this phone is v very much improved in that area. So the other big hardware um, addition with the iPhone 6S is something called 3D Touch. Now, you may remember from the Apple Watch, they had a thing called Force Touch. It was a pressure-sensitive screen. It had, you had a normal touch and you had a force touch. Well, this is 3D touch. This is more advanced. You have basically an infinite amount of pressure points with this display, but there are three main levels uh, throughout the OS. So, I mean, obviously, I can open my email like this and then, you know, go through stuff like that. Or I can actually 3D touch on the icon. Let me turn my brightness down a little bit. I can go ahead and 3D touch on the icon like that, just push a little harder, and it gives you these sub-menus. And some some apps, uh, mostly the Apple stock ones right now, support this. So you can just 3D touch on all of these different apps, and you get a bunch of different options. So say for the camera, you can 3D touch on that, you can get, you know, take a selfie, record a video, that kind of thing. So it's kind of cool. Another use for this is if you're in, like, the mail app, you can, uh, well, you can 3D touch on the email there, or you can um, push a little harder and it'll pop it in. Sorry, my screen's so bright. I, I have the white balance, or I have the brightness on the camera set to manual, so that's probably why. But anyway, uh, let me demonstrate that again. So I can push a little bit harder than normal, and I can look at the email, I can let go, and it goes away, or I can push a little harder and it'll pop it into your display. So th that's kind of cool. I like that feature. So there you go. That kind of thing. So that that's main. That's the main use for uh, 3D touch. I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate here. So you can see I have a keyboard. So you can push on the keyboard there, 
and then you can move the cursor around like that. It's a lot better than having to do this and then kind of like guess where your thing is. You can just, this is a lot more convenient and a lot nicer. This is the biggest use of 3D Touch in my opinion. So I, th I think that's pretty neat. So, you know, 3D Touch, yeah, it's a cool feature, but is it actually useful? Honestly, I have not been using it a lot, like at all, while I've had this phone. I don't know. It's just kind of one of those things where it's like, Okay, that's cool, but it, I don't think it's going to be amazing. Although, right now, a lot of app developers are not taking advantage of it. Like, Instagram has already taken advantage of it, but Facebook does not work. And if you force touch on an app that doesn't support it, it'll just blur out your screen and give you three quick, um, three quick vibrations. Speaking of vibrations, let's talk about that. The iPhone 6s now has the Taptic engine from the Apple Watch. It sits right about here, just below the battery in the phone. The vibrations on this phone are so much more pleasant now. When your phone vibrates, I mean, it, it doesn't feel like just a chintzy, vibrating piece of metal. It, it feels really, really nice. So I'm glad they changed out the vibrator for the Taptic engine. It, it, like, it makes the phone even more high quality. It feels really nice. So, that's cool. Let's talk about something else. Let's talk about the faster touch ID, which is actually kind of funny. People were complaining that the touch ID is now too fast. Let me just go ahead and demonstrate. So I don't have my finger on the button. I'm just going to push it. You can see I let up. Let me do that again. So I'm going to do this. See how that unlocked? I mean, this thing is so quick with unlocking. People are complaining it's too fast. I'm not. I hope they don't change it back. I hope they don't slow it down because that is really quick and really nice. So, it's about twice as fast as the iPhone 6. If you saw my first impressions video of the iPhone 6s, I did a comparison between the two phones. So, there you are. Um, Touch ID is a lot quicker and more more um, more accurate as well. And I also heard that it works better um, with wet fingers. So, if your fingers are a little damp, it should work a little better than it used to. So, that's cool too. So Touch ID has also been improved. Let's talk cameras. So they, Apple, of course, updated the cameras like they do every year. We now have a 12 megapixel shooter on the back, and it also supports 4K video now, which is pretty awesome. So yeah, you now have 12 megapixel shots and 4K video. And then we also have a 5 megapixel camera on the front instead of a 1.2 megapixel. So massive upgrade on the front camera, which is pretty pretty awesome because the front camera on the iPhones have always been kind of eh, so I'm glad they finally upgraded that. So I'm now going to input some pictures into the video, so yeah, so you should be seeing pictures right now after I edit this. The colors are really nice. The pictures in general are just really good on this phone. Like I, I, was, I was in Oregon um, for a few days. I just got back yesterday actually, and so I took a lot of pictures, and the pictures are just really, really good on this phone. I'm, I'm very happy with the camera on this phone. So there you are, there is a little demonstration of the cameras. So let's talk about something people always care about, the battery life. So I'm going to go into my screenshot here. And so this is a typical day for the phone. So you can see I had 31%. I have five and a half hours of usage and about nine hours of standby. That's about what you can expect out of this phone. Is it worse than the iPhone 6? It's hard to say, honestly. I mean, I, I think... Part of it is that I've been using my phone more lately, and so I think that has something to do with it. At the same time, I feel like it's a, just a tiny bit worse than the iPhone 6. I don't know. It's hard to say. Is it still good enough? Obviously. The, this battery life is still better than most Android devices, so you can see that, I mean, the battery life is, is still good enough on this phone. Is it worse? I don't know. It probably depends on your use case. So, there you are. Okay, so let's just go ahead and do a conclusion here. Is it the iPhone 6S? It's better than the iPhone 6 by a long shot in multiple areas that we've already talked about. Everything I've talked about is improvements over the iPhone 6. I could sit here and go through all the little features that the phone has had before, 
but I just for this review I just wanted to focus on what's new with the phone and just to kind of give you a perspective on it, on it is it better than the 6 is it better than the 6 yes absolutely should you upgrade if you have a 6 or a 6 plus well I don't know I feel like if you're happy with your iPhone 6 I don't I mean you can probably stick with it for at least another year but if you're like me I mean you had a lot of issues with the 6 or you know something just grabs at you I mean the 3D touch display the better cameras blah 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 if something is in the 6s that you want why not go for it I mean it's really up to you so there you are guys that is my full review on the iPhone 6s we're at about 16 minutes so that's pretty much average for my reviews on these phones but there you go the iPhone 6s is an excellent phone I rate it 9 out of 10 at least probably even 10 out of 10 but it's it's not exactly perfect. The battery life probably could be a little bit better. Like I said, it's still pretty darn good, but yeah. So this phone is pretty awesome. This is probably your best bet, one of the best phones you can get right now. I don't know. I'm just, I'm very disappointed in the Android uh, phone market right now. They all just kind of suck in one way or another, so I don't know. iPhone 6S, awesome phone. Thank you for watching my review. I will see you guys later.